Welcome, you wonderful people. Welcome to this tutorial on how to make a very, very nasty shooting AI. So what is the thing here? You make a shooting game, you make a game with, with uh, an enemy that is trying to shoot at your player. Now, typically, the first thing you will probably, probably do is just, hey, aim at the player and shoot directly at the player. Now, this is fine if your projectile goes instantly from your enemy to your player, like with a um, machine gun or something like that. And you don't want the projectiles to actually have a movement speed. They just go instantly. Psh. This is great for lasers. But what if you want to shoot projectiles like throwing spears or just during throwing, throwing a rocket that goes straight, you know, with no homing facilities or anything like that? then it's gonna become a little bit of a problem, isn't it? So how can we solve this? How can we actually make an enemy that's a little nastier, that is going to anticipate where the player is going to be when the projectile hits? Or more precisely, where do I need to shoot so that if the player keeps going at the same speed and in the same direction, my projectile and the player will inevitably meet and hit the player. This is this might sound like an easy problem at first. You say, oh, well, we know the speed of the player, so we just need to figure out where to shoot. But it's a little more complex, and that's what we're going to explore today. So let us first um, set the stage, the scene, right? So we have a player and an enemy. What happens if we just shoot directly at the player? Well, there you go. We shoot. I'm shooting very, 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 I'm shooting a lot of projectiles, but I keep missing the player, right? Now, this might work if at some point, perhaps the player stops moving and then, haha, I get him. Yes. But if he doesn't move, if, if he keeps moving, I want to make it more complex for him. So let us think about this problem with a little bit of a drawing here. What do we know first? What do we know? And then from what we know, we can find how we can figure things out. So we know two things. The position of the player, let's call this A, and the position of the turret, let's call this B. Because we know A and B, we also know the direction to the player from the turret or the direction to the turret from the player. We also know that A is traveling at a certain velocity. We know the velocity of A. Let's call that VA. We also know the speed at which the projectile travels. Let's call that SB. So now that we know what we know, oh, we also know because we know this direction between A and B and we know the velocity, we also know this angle here, this angle is alpha. So what do we not know? Well, while we know that alpha, well, that the player is going to move along this direction, that is a hypothesis we go by anyways. We do not know what the interception point is. Now let's call that interception point C, right? This is where we want to shoot if we want our projectile to meet the player. And so we don't know this line either. So let's call this line here because this line is actually um, opposite to point B. Let's call this line DB. This line here, which is opposite to A, let's call it DA. So you can call this the distance the player is going to move in front of B, and this is the distance the, um, the projectile is going to move relative to A, something like that. I'm naming this in this way 
for one very good reason you'll understand a little bit later. It's It might seem a little bit confusing, but that's just the way, uh, that's just to make things easier. And so we do know this here, which is DC. So what else do we know? Well, if we knew C, we could say that when we shoot our bullet from B, it's going to take some time to travel to C. That time, we can call it T. Actually, let me, let me write this here. Uh, and let me write this in purple. So we have this time T. And this time T, well, we don't know what it is. But if we were to know the distance dA, well, we could say, hey, it's actually the distance dA multiplied by the speed of B, right? Because we would have traveled, so T, we would have traveled for a certain time t, uh, if we travel after a certain time t, sorry, but let me let me rephrase this. We can say that dA equals um, the speed of b multiplied by the time. Sorry. And reflexively, we can also say that dB equals sA. SA, which is the speed, so the magnitude of the velocity vector here, SA times T. So this means that we can also express T in form of uh, this, in this form, saying T is equal to, um, to, 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 to DA, divided by SB, right? So because T equals DA divided by SB, let's replace T in this equation here, saying that DB equals SA multiplied by DA divided by SB. Or, we could also say simply that it is equal to dA multiplied by SA over SB. Now SA and SB, we both know. We have that information. Let me here put a little more space in there. We have that information. We know SA and we know SB. So let us say that R equals SA over SB. So this allows us to say that DB equals SA, um, not DA, sorry, times R. Okay, what is the purpose of all this? And how, do, and how does it help us solve this whole equation? Well, we've established a ratio between dB and dA. This is going to be very important later on. So in order to solve these kinds of things, when we see triangle, we always think about Pythagoras' law, Pythagoras' theorem, because it's very convenient for triangles. But the problem is it is only working for rectangle triangles, triangles with an angle that is equal to 90 degrees. But here, there is no guarantee that any of these angles is 90 degrees. Fortunately, there's another theorem that's called the um, cosine law, also known as the generalized Pythagoras' law or uh, Alcazir something. I, I, don't, I, don't know, I don't remember the name exactly. I apologize to math whizzes. I'm not a math whiz at all. Uh, but, uh, yeah, so this is the name. It's, it is best known as the cosine law, and we can easily find it. The law of cosines, we can easily find it here on Wikipedia. So what does the law of cosines say? Well, it says that for any triangle, whatever 
the angles of those triangles. We can define uh, the length of the different sides of the triangle, the sides of the triangles, and say that c squared, so c squared, which is this, and this is why I kept the kind of same no uh, names, s naming the, the, the edges by the angle they're opposed to, uh, because it's going to be easier to kind of map between uh, the law of cosines and, and our situation here. So c squared equals a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cosine gamma, the angle here. Now, we know, we don't know gamma, gamma is this thing here, this angle here, but we know alpha. And if we look at the laws of cosines, we actually also have a formula with alpha saying a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cosine alpha. So let us now elaborate, let us, let us now develop from there, from that formula. So we say, let me go a little bit more to the, to the left actually, because we are gonna need some room. So we know that dA squared equals db squared plus dc squared minus two times db two times db times dc times cosine of alpha. So if we know that, and we also know that db can be expressed in terms of dA, because it's dA multiplied by r. So let's oblige. Let's replace all our dBs by dA times r. So we say d, it is equal to dA squared equals to dA squared times r squared plus dc squared minus two times, so let's replace db by dA times r times dc times cosine alpha. And let us now put all these terms to the left. So this gives us dA squared minus, um, let's revert these two things, uh, r, r squared times dA squared plus, so let's put the 2 dA dr dc cos alpha here, and let's put the dA all the way to the right. So it's two, you're gonna understand why in a minute, two times r times dc times cosine alpha times dA. And finally, minus d c squared equals zero. So what is this? Hey, this looks awfully familiar. See here, I have a part that is about dA squared that I can actually simplify by saying it's one minus one minus r squared multiplied dA squared. So we have a quadratic equation here of the form ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. Where in this situation, a equals one minus r squared, b equals two times r times dc times cosine alpha, 
and C equals minus DC squared. So all we need to do is solve that quadratic equation and this will give us DA. And once we get DA, we will be able to define what T is because we know that DA equals the speed of the bullet, the speed of the projectile times T. So we know that T equals DA over SB. And once we know T, then we know how long this will travel at VA. And so we will know C. So let's now do all this in code. Let's first start with creating a class here, public class, uh, and call it my math, where we are going to just uh, have some static method. Uh, and this static method will be called public static int solve uh, solve quadratic a so float a so where a is the a in our quadratic equation float b float one second Ouais, je suis occupé, je descends dans 10 minutes. Oui, je sais, j'arrive. Sorry about that. Been trying to make this video for an hour and now I'm supposed to go eat. So I'm going to try and hurry up. So float C and then we're going to return two results because it's a quadratic equation. So a quadratic equation has zero, one or two possible results. So float root one, the results are called roots, out float root two. And so the int we're going to return in this um, method is the number of correct roots of valid roots. So now that we got this, um, let us see how we solve a quadratic equation. Once again, we can go to Wikipedia and we can find it here quadratic equation. And we know that x equals minus b plus or minus. So those are our two roots plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. Now this b squared minus 4ac is called the discriminant over 2a. So if the discriminant is greater than zero, then there is at least a solution. If the discriminant is equal to zero, it's just, just one solution. If it's greater than zero, then it, there's more than one. So there's two solutions. And if it's smaller than zero, then there's no solution um, in the real world. Anyways, let's not get into complex numbers. But um, yes, so um, there is no val there is no square root of a negative number in the real world. So there is no answer. There is no valid solution. This could be the case, for example, if the player moves away from the turret at a speed that is faster than the projectile speed. So let us do this. First, let's calculate the discriminant. So discriminant is equal to b squared minus 4ac. So b times b minus 4 times a times c. So far, so good. Now, if the discriminant is smaller than zero, then we have no valid answer. So this means that we need to re set the values of root one and root two. So let's set root one at the infinity. Infinity. And let's root two equals minus root one. It doesn't really matter what we put, but yeah, I just put something. And then finally, uh, we return zero, saying there is no valid roots. Else, then we can calculate the roots. So var, uh, so root one is equal to minus b plus the square root of uh, our discriminant 
and we divide this by 2a. And our second root is exactly the same, only we remove the square root of the discriminant. So we say minus here, and we say root 2. Finally, we return, well, we return, if the discriminant is equal to 0, we return, uh, is, if the discriminant is greater than 0, we return 2, else that means that it's equal to 0, so we return 1. So discriminant is greater than zero, then two, else one. There you go. So now that we have this, let us create a method here in our canon. Uh, and that method is gonna return a Boolean. The Boolean is gonna be true if there is a valid direction or false if there is none. And, um, find what uh, yeah in direction interception direction so this interception direction will take all the parameters we need to do our calculations what are those parameters well let's have a look let's go back to our little drawing here so let us put in there what we know. We know the position of the player. So let's call that uh, A, uh, so vector two, A. We know the position of the turret, vector two, B. So I'm using A, B, etc. because it's gonna make things easier to transpose to our little drawing. Obviously, um, some of you might say, oh, that's terrible naming. When you do math, you want to stick to how you visualize math. And this is the best way to do it. You visualize your thing and then you do that. Someone is going to read your code and not going to understand anything about it anyways if he doesn't understand the math that goes behind it. So then the third thing we need to pass is the velocity of A, VA, vector 2, VA. And then we need to pass a float, which is going to be the speed of the projectile, that's SB. And then finally, it's going to return a result in the form of a vector 2, which is the direction where we need to shoot. So now that we have this, let us keep building the information we need. So we have B, we have A, we have SB, we have VA, we still need to calculate alpha and DC and R before we can start doing our, our, our things. So in order to find DC, uh, yeah, in order to find DC, we can just do uh, var A to B. So that's gonna be the direction from A to B. A to B equals B minus A. So, DC is going to be the magnitude of that vector. Alpha is going to be the angle between the velocity of A and that vector. No, not math F. Vector 2 dot angle between, uh, between A to B and VA. Also, we're going to work with cosines, so we need to turn this angle, which is expressed in degrees, uh, into an angle expressed in radians by multiplying it by math f dot degree to radian. Now we need to define uh, the speed of A SA equals, and that's easy, it's just the magnitude of the velocity vector, so VA dot magnitude. And finally, with this, we can define R. R 
equals SA over SB, which we've already established. So now that we have this, we can just give all this and put it into our solve quadratic equation. So if solve quadratic, so my math dot solve quadratic, so A is one minus R squared, one minus R times R, B is two times R times DC times cosine alpha, two times, oh, not E, two times R times DC times cosine, uh, math, sorry, times math f dot cosine alpha. And then c is minus dc squared, so minus dc times dc. And then we need to add out var. Uh, out var root one, out var root two. So if this result is equal to zero, that means we have no valid solutions. So if we have no valid solutions, well, we just set result here to be vector two dot zero and we return false. So if we do have a correct answer, we have one or two roots. So we don't need to check how many roots we have, but of those two roots, one will be negative and one will be positive. So all we need to do is to figure out which one is the positive one by just using mathf.max. So, and the result of that is going to be da. So var da equals math f dot max between root one and root two. Awesome. So now we have da. We said with da we can know t because t equals, as we said, da divided by sb. Because we know t, we can now finally find c by saying c equals a, so that's the position of a at the start, plus the velocity of a multiplied by the time. And finally, we can find our interception direction which is the direction C minus B. That's the direction in which we need to shoot. And we want to normalize this because all we need is the direction. Finally, we return true. And now in our fire method, so the fire method here, my cannon has a projectile rigid body and a target rigid body. So that's how I can access the speed of the target and also has a float projectile speed. So what I'm doing right now is I'm instantiating every one hundredth of a second. Maybe that's a little too much, uh, but this allows us to visualize it pretty well. But let's just go with one tenth of a second. It's going to be enough. Um, and so it instantiates a projectile and sets its velocity. And currently it just goes to the direction of the target. So what we want to do here is say if um, interception direction. So we need to pass it the position of the player. So that's target dot transform dot position. We need to pass it the position of the turret. That's transform dot position. We need to pass it the velocity of a. So that's target dot velocity. The speed of the projectile projectile speed. And finally, we set that out of our direction. So if this is true, then it means that we have a valid solution. So all we need to do is say instance.velocity equals direction multiplied by projectile speed. 
else, well, we're going to keep doing what we were doing all this time. And so finally, let us test this out. Does this work? Drum roll. Let us shoot. And there you go. Our poor player has no chance in the world. Let's change his direction. Let's let's give him something else. Let's put him here and make him move like really fast, like minus 25 velocity over y equals five. Let's look at that. Wow, all these projectiles they hit. And then afterwards, our turret can't shoot anymore just because there are just no solutions. There's no way this player is moving way too fast. So we can't catch up with it. But we did manage to get a few good hits on him. So anyways, this is it. Hope you liked it. And see you next time in another tutorial.